What's up guys, I'm about to share with you the secret to buying a house in the current market with a super low or even no interest rate and little to no money down. Now, I say that because in this market that's shifting and rates are going up and everything is changing so quickly, I believe it's more important than ever that you have the tools in your tool belt to be able to utilize and use to grow your portfolio without having to be subject to the banks and subject to the high interest rates and uh, big down payments because quite frankly, when I started at 21, I didn't have the credit or the money. And so the key to buying a house is number one, write it down if you're taking notes and give you the three, uh, uh, three steps Number one is finding that motivated seller. You know, something I commonly uh, hear people say is, well, nobody wants to sell their house with nothing down in my area. And my answer is, mine neither. <laughs> Except when you ask the right questions, then you find the person. Let me ask you this. So how many of you have went to buy a car? And the very first car dealer you went to, and the very first car you saw, the very first color was the very car you wanted. Well, that happens sometimes, but it's not super likely, right? Normally, you're gonna get online and you're gonna be scrolling through if you're looking online and you're gonna click on one and it's not quite right. It's the wrong kind, the wrong color, and you're gonna go to the next one and you're gonna go to the next one. You're gonna go out and go to a dealership and test drive one or two or three until you find the one that fits. In similar fashion, when you're buying houses with what I call terms, payments over time, not being subject to the bank, the same thing happens. Probably not gonna be the first seller you talk to that's a fit. Probably not even the second or third or fourth. Might not even be the 20th or 30th. So the, the question is, how badly do you want the property? How many people are you willing to talk to? How many no's are you willing to get to get to a yes? So number one is finding a motivated seller. There's only two ways to find them. Number one, they call you. Number two, you call them from an online ad. Now, when they call me from my ads online, the close rate is much, much higher because they have reached out saying, hey, I need to sell my house fast. Whereas when I'm calling them, it's just a numbers game. We talk to dozens or even hundreds of sellers and then we narrow it down to the few who are a, what I call prospect, somebody we're likely to do business with. So number one is finding a motivated seller, someone who wants to sell the house, maybe not a wholesaler way, right? Maybe they wanna get more money or they owe too much to take a discount on it. Yet in the current market, there's houses that are sitting on the market, not selling, and you are the answer to that seller's prayer. So after you find the right seller, then it is asking the right questions. What's the right questions? Listen carefully to this. You wanna back this video up and listen multiple times. What's the right questions to ask when buying on terms? Number one, to the seller. Normally the way it works is we buy the house from you. I'm not a realtor, so there's no 6% commissions. I'll pay the closing costs and I'll make you a monthly payment or if there's an underlying mortgage, I'll pay uh, payments on the underlying mortgage until I pay you off in full and an agreed time in the future. Does that sound good to you? And then what are they gonna say? Most of the time, no, oh crap, move on to the next one. Then when someone says yes, now you have yourself a prospect. It's a win for them, it's a win for you, everybody wins. Now, your next question is either A, you're gonna cover that underlying mortgage amount. There's a whole bunch of objections popping up in some of your thoughts right now and I unfortunately will, have time, will not have time on this video to answer every one of them. But what if they say yes, they'll accept monthly payments. Now we say, what's the least you'll accept every single month until I pay you off in full? Magic question number two. Then thirdly, after they say that, this is the magic question above all. Guys, usually we buy with nothing down, okay? And somebody said, oh my gosh, I can't say that. Okay, then ask them how much they want. But it will be your loss, I assure you, because I've bought countless houses over the years, done so many deals with nothing down because it's a win for the seller. They're getting more. Somebody said, why would the seller do that? Because they're getting more money over time. They're saving the realtor's fee. There's no listing commissions, I'm not a realtor, and I'm paying the closing costs. So it's a win for them. They make more money over time. So who are we looking for? Sellers who want to make more money over time rather than less money now. And believe me, there's a lot of people out there who are happy to make more money over time. You just got to find them or potentially happy to get rid of the debt that they have hanging out there, the payment on the house that they paid 
a half a million for last week, or excuse me, last year, and their payments uh, perhaps are, I don't know, a couple grand a month, 2,500 a month, and yet a new buyer coming in and buying that house with a higher interest rate would be paying 3,800 or 4,000. I didn't do the math, so uh, anybody who wants to can do the math and <laughs> on that, right? But uh, you get the point. So we come in and we buy the house, and because of what you know, because of what we know, we we're able to buy the house, pay a good price, pay the closing costs, and turn it into profit for ourselves. It's a way to acquire short-term rentals. It's a way to acquire long-term rentals. It's a way to buy houses for any reason, or quite frankly, commercial properties too. So what is the other magic for being able to buy these houses and get great rates? On top of asking the right questions, Lastly, you have to get to the close. What is the next step? Ask yourself this question every time you're on the phone with a seller. What is the next step? And don't get off the phone until you have clarity on what the next step is. Either the next step is gonna be a follow-up or it's going to be a sending out a contract or it's going to be, if it's in the local area, perhaps you're gonna go see it in person. Whatever that next step is, don't get off the phone until you have it because What's the tempting thing to do sometimes? We get excited, we discuss the house, we find a motivated seller, we ask the right questions, and then they say yes and we go, crap, what do I do now? And so we get off the phone going, well, we'll follow back up and get in touch with you sometime. Don't do it. Make sure you have clearly defined to both yourself and the seller what the next step is. Great, Joe. So I'll tell you what, I'll call you back tomorrow. When is good for you? Seven o'clock? Awesome. Touch base with you tomorrow after you've spoken to your wife about the deal. Make sure we're on the same page. And then the next step will be we move forward to get this on uh, a purchase agreement so that we can get it sent over to title and move forward to closing. Does that sound good? What is the next step? That's a writer downer. Write it on a big sheet of paper and every time you're talking to sellers, have it on your desk because that is the number one killer in this business. If you're getting on the phone and talking to sellers, it's to not to find the next step before you get off the phone. Those, my friend, are the three keys to buying a house with low to no interest rates and little to nothing down in the current market. Like, subscribe, follow, share, and you'll get a lot more great content coming up soon. I'll see you on the next one.